Hello, everyone. This is Professor He. Nice to see you again. The topic of this task is about the wet air process and applications. Maintaining a living space or an industrial facility at the desired temperature and humidity requires some process called air conditioning process. These processes include simple cooling, humidifying, and dehumidifying. Sometimes two or more of these processes are needed to bring the air to a desired temperature and humidity level. Firstly, let's talk about the heating process. A heating process is known as a process of 1 to 2. This is a constant humidity heating process. The amount of moisture in the air remains constant during this process since no moisture is added to or removed from the air. That is, the specific humidity of the air remains constant during a heating process with no humidification or dehumidification. Such a heating process proceeds in the direction of increasing dry bulb temperature following a line of constant specific humidity on the psychrometric chart which appears as a vertical line. Notice that the relative humidity of air decreases during a heating process even if the specific humidity omega remains constant. This is because the relative humidity is a ratio of the moisture content to the moisture capacity of air at the same temperature, and moisture capacity increases with temperature. Therefore, the relative humidity of heated air may be well below comfortable levels, causing dry skin respiratory difficulties and an increase in static electricity. A cooling process is shown as a process of 1 to 1 apostrophe. This is a constant humidity cooling process. A cooling process at constant specific humidity is similar to the heating process discussed above, except the dry bulb temperature decreases and the relative humidity increases during such a process, as shown in the right figure. Cooling can be accomplished by passing the air over some coils through which a refrigerant or chilled water flows. Secondly, let's talk about the adiabatic humidification process. Process 1 to 2 or 1 to 2 apostrophe shown in the figure is an adiabatic humidification process and is quite common in air conditioning process. The location of state 2 depends on how the humidification is accomplished. If steam is introduced in the humidification section, this will result in humidification with additional heating. If humidification is accomplished by spraying water into the air stream instead, part of the latent heat of vaporization comes from the air, 
which results in the cooling of the air stream. This process can be regarded as a constant enthalpy process. Thirdly, let's talk about the cooling with dehumidification. The specific humidity of air remains constant during a simple cooling process, while its relative humidity increases. If the relative humidity reaches undesirably high levels, it may be necessary to remove some moisture from the air, that is, to dehumidify it. This requires cooling the air below its dew point temperature. Hot, moist air enters the cooling section at state 1. As it passes through the cooling coils, its temperature decreases and its relative humidity increases and constant specific humidity. If the cooling section is sufficiently long, air reaches its dew point. Further cooling of air results in the condensation of part of the moisture in the air. Air remains saturated during the entire condensation process, which follows a line of 100% relative humidity until the final state is reached. The water vapor that condenses out of the air during this process is removed from the cooling section through a separate channel. The condensate is usually assumed to leave the cooling section at T2. The dry air mass balance is the water mass balance is the energy balance for the process is the cool saturated air and state 2 is usually routed directly to the room where it mixes with the room air. In some cases, however, the air and state 2 may be at the right specific humidity, but at a very low temperature. In such cases, air is passed through a heating section where its temperature is raised to a more comfortable level before it is routed to the room. Fourthly, let's talk about the wet cooling towers, power plants, large air conditioning systems, and some industries generate large quantities of waste heat that is often rejected to cooling water from nearby lakes or rivers. In some cases, however, the cooling water supply is limited, or thermal pollution is a serious concern. In such cases, the waste heat must be rejected to the atmosphere with cooling water recirculating and serving as a transport medium for heat transfer between the source and the sink. One way of achieving this is through the use of wet cooling towers. A wet cooling tower is essentially a semi-enclosed evaporative cooler. An induced draft counterflow wet cooling tower is shown schematically in the right figure. Air is drawn into the tower from the bottom and leaves through the top. Warm water from the condenser is pumped to the top of the tower and is spread into this 
airstream. The purpose of spraying is to expose a large surface area of water to the air. As the water droplets fall under the influence of gravity, a small fraction of water evaporates and cools the remaining water. The temperature and the moisture content of the air increase during this process. The cooled water connects at the bottom of the tower and is pumped back to the condenser to absorb additional waste heat. Makeup water must be added to the cycle to replace the water lost by evaporation and air draft. To minimize water carried away by the air, drift eliminators are installed in the wet cooling towers above the spray section. Okay, that's all for this task. Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you.